What's going on, everybody? It is January 29th, Monday slate, back off of a weekend uh, where I did not play at all. Uh, didn't even really pay attention to anything NBA, so I'm kind of excited to, to dive in here and take a look at everything. We've got six games. Um, Nuggets Celtics is pretty awesome. Bucks Sixers is pretty awesome. The rest of it's kind of meh. But let's just dig in. I'm kind of pumped. Uh, first up, Pacers and Hornets. Pacers are three-point favorites at home. Uh, they've got a 108.75 implied total, which is second. Now, let's see here. Oladipo, 9,300 on both sites, which is kind of interesting. It's really expensive on DraftKings. <laughs> Alrighty, let's take a look at Old Depot here. He needs 46 plus. He's done it twice in the past eight games. Hmm. That's kind of crazy. Been really steady lately, but not as boom and busty. So. I don't really love the matchup. It's not the best. I can feel pretty safe avoiding him. Um, it's just hard because he's the primary guy. He's a four for me. Thad Young, 6,500 on FanDuel. Uh, absolutely no interest. Uh, 5,700 on DK. So that's... You know, 33 for 6x. He's hit that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 out of his last 6. So has been a little bit better. Again, don't totally love the matchup. But he's been playing a lot better. And that's FanDuel only. Um, probably a 3. 3-4. Three, I don't... I, I wouldn't end up with him, I don't think. Darren Collison, 5,500 on FanDuel, 6,200 on DK, which is ludicrous. But 5,500 is not bad. It's 27K, 20, 27, 28-ish range. I haven't done this in a couple days. I'm struggling. Um, <clears throat> so he's been overvalued in four of his last five, including a 50-pointer. Um... I'm perfectly okay with Darren Collison on FanDuel. Ooh, uh, Thad Young should be DraftKings. I don't know why I said FanDuel before, but Thad Young should be DK only. Darren Collison is FanDuel only. And that's a three. I would definitely prefer Collison to Oladipo, just because of prices. Uh, Bojan, not really the <clears throat> game for him. Corey Joseph... 3,800 on DK. Are the minutes still steady? Oh, God, he's just so bad. From a fantasy sp standpoint, I actually like him in, like, real basketball. Like, it's hard to disregard Corey Joseph if he's going to play 28 minutes. So he's still a DK4 for me. Uh, but the $3,800 price tag is just... You can't totally ignore it. And then uh, Sabonis and Turner, I don't have any interest in either. Um, Turner at 5,500 is... At FanDuel is a little intriguing, um, but we just there's too much variability there for me right now. So for the Hornets, uh, 105.75 implied total is sixth on the night. First up, we've got Kemba, who is 8,500 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DK. That feels just slightly too high, but been playing pretty decent you need like 42 he's uh had 40 plus he had 44 plus in four of his last five um he's been really steady lately i just i don't totally love this matchup for him yeah, i'm probably being harsh he's a three he's just he's priced where he's supposed to be Dwight Howard, 10,100 on FanDuel, 9,100 on DK. He's just been insane lately. Um, 
Here's his last seven. 55, 60, 51, 51, 45, 49, 53. He's been playing out of his mind. Um, it's really hard to overlook that performance. His, this has to be exceptional to look at. How good has he been? Yeah. Look at that. So he was pretty steady here in this like 1.2 point per possession range for two months basically and then something happened in the middle of january and he has been shot out of a cannon it's not even just like even here just since the beginning of january rough night on uh, since the new year he had a rough night new year's eve and then came back and right now he's been at 1.2 or higher in every single game except for one and a lot of these games have been over 1.4, two games over 1.6. He's just playing out of his mind. Um, with that said, I won't have him at all on FanDuel. He's 10,100. Uh, it's way too expensive, in my opinion. Where is he? Yeah, um, I, I can't imagine having him. If you want to have him on DraftKings, I'd... I don't know why I'm typing DraftKings. I'd be uh, perfectly okay with him on DK. But if I'm locking in one center, um, I think he's just a little too expensive. I know that he's been hot, but I also don't necessarily think he's a different player or anything right now. Um, he's fine. You know, I'll, I will make him a FanDuel 4 because... I think he's relatively safe, particularly in this matchup, where you know you're not going to get, a, you're probably not going to get a ton of Turner, and otherwise he's getting a piece of Sabonis, who gets a little foul happy, if I remember correctly. I don't know if that's changed since the beginning of the year. Let's check it out. Ah, uh, it, it has gotten a little bit better. He's middle of the pack for big men in terms of fouling, so either way. But I don't think Dwight is going to be some sort of new person. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Nick Batum, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DK. Uh, so you're looking for like 27. He's had a couple 30s and a 40-point game in the past two weeks. He's just perfectly acceptable, Nick Batum. MKG, 4,900 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. Continues to be interesting on DraftKings. So let's say DK3. And then Marvin Williams, uh, 4,500 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. How did I spell that wrong? Oh. Not an E. Marvin Williams has a pretty decent matchup. Uh, the Pacers are pretty bad at giving up threes. Marvin Williams shoots 50% of his shots from three. Uh, he's 4,200 on DK. He's 4,500 on FanDuel. Uh, I like him a lot for as much as you can like you know, Marvin Williams when things haven't changed. Um... I don't really want to go after Jeremy Lamb or Kaminsky. They just don't get enough minutes. So let's move on to the Hawks. Hawks are uh, 104.5 implied total, which is seventh. They're five and a half point underdogs at home against the Minnesota Timberwolves. I've already done that. Pulled up all the uh, cleaning the glass data first, so I don't have to hop to it during the videos. Okay, Hawks. Schroeder, 7,300 and 7,200. It's like 36. Um, minutes have been in the 20s for the past four games, so it's pretty hard to... Like, I've got them at 30 for this one, thinking that they have to rebound, but I don't trust him. Torian Prince is 4,800 on FanDuel, 4,700 on DK, so we want 25. He's done that twice in his last seven, but... Lots of single-digit games. 
Um, don't really love this matchup. Don't really like a lot here for the Hawks. Kent Bazemore, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. So you're looking for 27. Get two and a half in the last one. Um, had Has had three 30-point games in the past two weeks. Don't really love the price, but I'd be okay with uh, ending up with him, I guess. Baze Moreau. See, my typing is terrible on a Monday when I can't, like, think. Don't have coffee in me. Ilya Sova, 4,200 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. He's, it's, that's fine. It's just not a great matchup. Then John Collins, 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. You guys know the drill. Hyper-efficient, but just not playing enough minutes. Um, still just a four for me. I understand why you would want him in a couple GPP lineups. He has the ability <clears throat> to go for 43 in 26 minutes if the game's going well. So. Now, the interesting part of this, Minnesota hosts, or uh, in Atlanta, they have a 110 implied total, which is currently first. Uh, the Bucks, where, which two games was it? Bucks, Sixers, and Grizzlies, Suns were both uh, lines that weren't out yet. But let's take a look at Minnesota here, because this is going to be pretty interesting, I think. Andrew Wiggins, 6,500 on both sites. So you're looking for 33. Um, Jimmy Butler back in the most recent one. Wiggins with 34. Uh, you know, Wiggins putting up numbers with Butler out. He had 30 fantasy points in the last game that Butler played. 6,500 makes me a little nervous. I do want to pull up the Wolves here. I just know that like, Gibson's not the offensive rebounder. I think it was Teague and Wiggins. Wiggins, good offensive rebounder. Butler, good. Gibson is meh. Towns is pretty good. No, Teague was the one that was bad for his position. Okay. Uh, it, it, it's hard for me to get super excited about Wiggins with Butler back, but he's still fine. Uh, Butler at 9,400 is going to need 47. He had 44 um, two nights ago. I think this is an exceptional game for Butler. So I definitely have some interest there. I don't expect him to pop a lot on the optimizer. Um, they kind of just notoriously don't like Jimmy Butler. But I expect big things for him tonight. Um, number one implied total. Atlanta not the best defensively. You know, he got another day's rest, so hopefully, you know, feeling pretty good. Uh, he's a two for me on FanDuel. He's a three for me on DK. Um, that $9,400 price tag on DraftKings is a little prohibitive for him. Then we've got Towns, 9,800 FanDuel, 9,600 DraftKings. Hmm, that's really expensive. You're looking 50. He's done it in the past two including the most recent game with Butler back. Um, why wouldn't he be in a great spot? I'm trying to think. The most likely scenario right now for center is going to be, depending on prices and how this has been formulated, I would guess Greg Monroe. Um... There's a decent chance that Alex Lynn doesn't play, and Tyson Chandler uh, doesn't generally play on a back-to-back, -back. so it's possible that Greg Monroe gets all the minutes that he can handle, you know, with Bender playing a bit of the five. If that's the case, then you're going to probably want Monroe. Haven't gotten there yet. Um, I like Towns. I would rather have Towns than Dwight, but... Ah, man, that's tricky. I don't totally love it. I don't know why. Taj, 5,800 and 5,700. 
So we're looking for just under 30 for Taj. He's had three 30-point games in the past two weeks. Um, tends to be pretty steady. I don't think anybody's shocked by any of this. Teague, 6,100 on both sides. All oh, this same pricing is crazy. Teague needs 30. Uh, he had 37 and 41 in two games without Butler. Has had a 39-pointer with Butler. Um, I'm okay with Teague. He's my least interesting piece of all of this. You know what? He's probably just a three. They're all everything there for Minnesota looks pretty good. To the Grizzlies we go. Um, since I've last spoke, Grizzlies have uh, shut down Mike Conley. Conley going through surgery, so he's going to be out for the rest of the season. It's just a shame uh, for somebody as good as Conley. Uh, Grizzlies I have as six point favorites at home versus the Suns. Um, with with a 108 implied total, which feels a little high. I'm going to knock that down by a point. Yeah, that feels a little bit better. 107.5 implied total, which would be fourth. Let's take a look at them, though. Uh, Mark Gasol, 7,900 on FanDuel, 8,500 on DK. I have a feeling I'm going to really like this, actually. And if I do, it could be the step up from... Um, Monroe if his price is low. No news on Tyreek yet, so I'm assuming that he plays, but we need 40 out of Gasol. He had 55 in his last one, coming off a two nights rest. Um, wasn't very good in the four games previous, but you would think uh, the Suns would be a great spot for him, so I really like Mark Gasol. Uh, I actually think that I'm going to say that Mark Gasol is a two. He's about as good of a spot. He's, he's in as good of a spot as he can be. Have they played at all this year? They played twice within five days in um, December is the word I'm looking for. He had right around 40. This seems like a better stretch for him, so I'm going to stick with it there. Uh, Tyreek Evans, 8,200 on both sites would need 41. Um, blah, 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 blah. If, you know, if he plays and we think that he's healthy, I mean, doesn't he just roast Phoenix? Doesn't everybody just roast Phoenix? What's wrong with Evans? illness okay so he should be playing by all accounts um yeah i like tyreek he's a three though i think his price is a little high um and i think the matchup fits gasol more than it fits evans uh, jarrell martin 5200 on fanduel 4800 on dk so you're looking for 25 plus um you know he's been really steady Past four, you know, he missed the, the game on the 24th, but his past four games would have been 22, 27, 20, 20, and 31. Um, so it has the opportunity to provide value for sure. Still just the three because he's Jarrell Martin. It's really close to a two on DraftKings at 4,800, though. I don't want any part of Dylan Brooks. I don't really need any part of Andrew Harrison, but he can be a four. Um, I don't have a ton of interest in Wayne Selden. Um, you can talk me into Mario Chalmers on FanDuel 3,600. So he's 100 over Min Sal. Put up 42 um, with Evans out three night or two nights ago. Then Ivan Rab, uh, I'm not interested in. So let's go to Phoenix. Phoenix right now um, would be a 101.5 implied total, which would be 10th. I keep hopping over to cleaning the glass, but I keep forgetting that I grabbed all of them. Okay, so Phoenix. 
Booker, 8,000 on FanDuel, 8,700 on DK. Got to keep an eye on him a little bit. He got a little dinged up um, at the end of the game last night, but you need 40 out of him. He had 46 last night. Uh, he's had 46 in another game in the past two weeks, plus a 67-pointer. Um, if I didn't have the news of the fall last night, I would have probably said Devin Booker was a two for me. But with that said, he's a FanDuel 3 and a DK 4. Uh, I don't really like that DK price. And while uh, you know Memphis isn't a very good basketball team, they are functionally decent defensively. TJ Warren, though, 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. You need 33 for Warren. Um, he's done that in three of the five games since he's been back. Uh, I, I like TJ Warren uh, a boatload here. Um, could almost make a case that he's a two. You know, it's small forward. It's such a wasteland. Um, I mean, really, you're only looking at Jimmy Butler, or uh, you're only looking really at Giannis for like high level small forwards, right? Him and Jimmy Butler, and then you're dropping down to TJ Warren. So I'd be shocked if I didn't have TJ Warren tonight. And from there, we've got Josh Jackson, 4,600 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. I think he went 0 for 15 last night. Maybe it wasn't 15. He's a small forward, right? 0 for 13 from the field. Which is fucking so bad. <laughs> I feel like if I got 13 shots up in an NBA game, I'd knock one down. Gotta figure one or two of those were open looks. That's brutal. That's gonna be so embarrassing. Uh, yeah, I don't want him. But I didn't want him regardless. It didn't matter. Uh, one dude I want to look at is Greg Monroe. So Greg Monroe is 4,500 on FanDuel, 5,600 on DK, which is just a grimy piece of business by DraftKings. Um, at 4,500, you know, by all accounts, Greg Monroe should have to play. I've got him at 24 minutes. That, it would shock me if it was significantly lower than that. Um, you know, he's got 34 and 30 minutes here, 40 and 29 minutes. 17 and 26 is a letdown, but I'm expecting him to be pretty heavily owned tonight. Uh, he's a two on FanDuel. 4,500 for a center on FanDuel is um, is great. Like to be able to lock something like that in really opens up everything else with the lack of positional flexibility. Uh, on DK, I don't even want him. Uh, 5,600 is not interesting to me at all. Yeah, you know what? That's I'm probably being unfair because of being able to play more than one center. Uh, but he's a four. Just it's hard to not like Monroe tonight. The weirder part of it all is that if I stepped up from Monroe, I'd probably step up to Marcus <laughs> All right, to the Bucks. Um, Bucks 108 implied total, which is third, and I'm assuming that Malcolm Brogdon plays. Um, so first up is Middleton, 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. I like this matchup for Middleton. I don't know why. I'm going to like it for Giannis and Bledsoe too, I think. So Middleton needs 38. He's had uh, two straight 30-point games. Back-to-back -back 50s with Giannis out. I don't see any reason he couldn't get there, but you know Philly is pretty solid defensively, so just a three for me. Giannis is 11-6 on FanDuel, 11,000 on DK. He needs 58. I uh, had the 78-pointer a couple nights ago. He's been solid. Have they played Philly at all? I assume they have. Nope, not at all. Last year, 
Never went crazy. I don't totally trust him here. I think I'd rather have Jimmy Butler, but... Yeah. Giannis might be a place where you have to pay up. Anxious to see this. I don't... I don't think I'll have Giannis. Bledsoe, though. 7,000 on FanDuel. 6,900 on DK. Uh, so you're looking for 35. He's had two 40-point games in the past two weeks. Everything else has been below value. Um, but I think this is a better spot for him. I like him a lot. Especially because he gets to the line. Philly's pretty bad at that. Lots of fouls. So... You would think the ball will be in Bledsoe's hands for a pretty solid amount of this game. Brogdon, 5,600 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK, which is kind of interesting. That's 28. Um, he's been in and out of the lineup. He's just a three. Um, it's just because he's been in and out. And then Henson gets the Embiid task. 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. He needs 27. I've been there in the last three. Um, yeah, he's a four. I mean, if you're going to spend 5,500 on John Henson, you would probably just take Greg Monroe. So, I don't know. Sixers. Um, 106 implied total. Fifth on the slate. I hope I like something here. So as we know, uh, getting to the rim against the Bucks is like the easiest thing in the world to do, but they cut away uh, just about everything else except for corner threes. Anxious to see how the defense transforms now that Jason Kidd is gone. Um, so we'll start with Ben Simmons. 8,500 80, on Fandle. Did that crater? No, he's just been there. I felt like he was higher than that. I guess I was just thinking about him when he was in this 10 and 9 range. Oh yeah, I took him that night that he that it dropped even further, right? Yeah. Okay. So he needs 42. Um it's pretty healthy. He said 42 in his last two plus the 60 pointer a couple nights ago, so it's possible. Simmons is rounding into form. Um, eighty-five hundred is expensive, though. There's an eye in Simmons. I'd be surprised to know. He's just a three for me. I, it's hard to get too crazy. He's actually Fanduel three for me. I don't really think I would want him on DraftKings, but. I'll put him at four. Embiid, 9,700 on FanDuel, 9,800 on DK. Whew. Need 50. As an ad, he's only had 50 once in the past two weeks. He's been oddly quiet. <sighs> yeah, I don't love it. Wouldn't shock me if you went ham, though. Um, just a straight three for me. Could get to a two. It's close. It's really close. I like Embiid tonight. I just don't trust him. Covington, 6,300 on FanDuel. 5,900 on DK. Not someone I'm really interested in here. Uh, needs 31. I mean, clearly gets there from time to time, but I, I don't want him tonight. Saric, 6,700. He's stepped down in minutes lately. Um, 21, 28, and 28 instead of the mid-30s, which we're used to. Uh, if that's going to happen, I, you, you, know, you can't roster him. Not at that price. TJ McConnell, though. 4,500 on FanDuel and DK. Um, so he would need 22. Uh, he's only played 16 minutes in his most recent game. Um last night 24 and the night before uh, if he gets his minutes back up I think that uh, he could look like a steal at that price 
Probably need that second Alan McConnell. Um, yeah, he's a three, but um, it's a very cautious three. And then uh, I don't want any Bayless, Sanderson, TLC. So Dallas. Mavs hosting the Heat. Mavs 97.75 implied total is 12th, and they are a point and a half underdogs at home. This game is going to be, I would imagine, the worst for fantasy. Both teams are pretty solid defensively. So Harrison Barnes up first. Um, 6,600 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. So you're looking for 33. You know, three games at 33 or higher, other three below. Um, don't like the matchup, but he's perfect. Fill, he's perfectly acceptable filler. Uh, Wes Matthews is 5,000 on FanDuel, 5,200 on DK. You're looking for 25. Um, Miami pretty good at cutting out threes, so this isn't a great matchup for Wes Matthews. I'm going to pass. Dennis Smith. 6,400 on FanDuel, needs 32. He's done that in four of his last six. Uh, has really been playing a little bit better. Let's take a look at his. I think I had that up before I came into this. Ah. He's been up and down lately. But was very down. It seems like he has changed his level of play a little bit. Yeah, I'd be perfectly okay with Dennis Smith. It's just not a game you want to focus on, really. I'm probably going to pass on Yogi Ferrell. J.J. Barea at 4,400 is the only guy that I would want to pay attention to. Did not play two nights ago. Yeah, I'm just going to pass. To the Heat. Heat, um, 99.25 implied total is 11th. Bolt, this is... By far the, the lowest pace game on uh, on the docket tonight. Josh Richardson, 6,500 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. I don't have much interest in him getting to 32 fantasy points in this one. Although he could. He's had uh, quite a few, you know, 35, 34, 34, 32, 37. He, he gets in that area, but there's not a lot of upside in his number. Um, I do like the matchup for him, though. So I'm going to make him a four. I wouldn't be mad if I ended up with him, but I, it, I just can't see it. It'll be Warren and somebody else. Wayne Ellington is 4,500 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. You need 22. Um, he's done that quite a few times. In five of his last six, 26, 22, 32, 21, 22, 25. Feels pretty safe with uh, some decent upside in the number. So I like him as a three on FanDuel. I don't really want him on DK. 5100's a bit too pricey. Same for Drogic on... Uh, on DK, 7,500 is out of my price range, but 6,800 on FanDuel is, is possible. You would need 35. Um, hasn't been there at all in the past two. Did have some. Did have a 39-point game about two weeks ago. I'd look at him. I don't necessarily expect to get him, but he's a FanDuel 4. Uh, James Johnson, 5,300 and 5,600. It's 26 and change. Um, he's a four for me. And pricing is tight tonight. Don't really have any interest in Tyler Johnson. Don't have any interest really in Whiteside. Played 18 minutes in the last one. Um, he's at 7,900, so you'd need 40. Um, he can get there, but I'm just, I don't really trust it. I'm fine there. Let's get to the last game. Final game on the slate. Denver Nuggets hosting the Boston Celtics. Uh, Nuggets 103 implied total is 8th. They are 1.5 point favorites at home. Already have it. 
So Gary Harris is 7,100 on FanDuel, 6,100 on DK. I don't have really any interest here. He would need 35. Uh, he's done that quite a few times in the past two weeks. All but two, so four out of his last six. 7,100 is just so expensive. It's so hard to get any value out of that, particularly going against Boston, who's you know arguably the best defensive team in basketball right now. So I'm going to say that Gary Harris is DK only as a three. Uh, Nikola Jokic, 9,700 on FanDuel, 8,600 on DK. Just pr this pricing for the Nuggets is so much better on DraftKings, which is such a bummer. Or is it? It might be a trap. Uh, you want 50 out of Jokic. He's done that once in the past two weeks. He's got a 48-pointer that would have hit value at this number. But I can't imagine wanting to take Jokic here. Um, I'm going to say that he's just a DraftKings 3. Again, like the, at 8,600, it's a completely different story. Will Barton, 6,300 on FanDuel, 5,700 on DraftKings. Uh, you're looking for 30 and change. Barton, four straight games in the 20s. That feels like a a game where he could have like a coming out party. But again, I don't really want him on FanDuel. He can be in a lineup on FanDuel as a FanDuel 4. But again, I want Bill, Will Barton as a, as a DK3, much like uh, his first two teammates. Jamal Murray at 6,500 is 32. That's, I'm, I don't want Jamal Murray. I don't want Wilson Chandler. Mason Plumlee, 5,500 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. This is the only spot where I'd be slightly interested. You need 27 for value on FanDuel. Um, he's been there in four of his last five. Just feels like he, they're playing a little bit differently. So he'll be a FanDuel 4 and a DraftKings 3 because he's only 4,800 on DK. Lots to like on DraftKings for the Nuggets tonight. And finally, we head to Boston. Celtics, 101.5 uh, implied total is 10th. There is basically nothing to care about <laughs> for the Celtics. Um, so we've got Kyrie at 9,800 on DK. You need 45. Um, he's been in the 40s in his past four, including one at 58. Um... I don't I don't really love it. He's a three. He's it's perfectly fine. I just it's unsexy. Same for Horford. Seventy one hundred on FanDuel, seventy three hundred on DK. He needs thirty five. Um he's at forty in his last two to three again. I don't expect to get to him, but I wouldn't be mad if I did. Brown and Tatum, I mean you can you know, they need 27. Uh, I feel safer with Brown. So I'm going to say Jalen Brown is a four. Jason Tatum is a four. Marcus Morris is a four. I just don't like the game. I don't like the Celtics having to play in Denver. You know, just not a great fit and then Rozier 4700 you know you want 25 out of Rozier can get there but again nothing sexy the prices are all just fine that's what we got let's throw this into the optimizer and see what comes out it's just a lot of middling plays which is fine but those are the nights where if late news doesn't drop, it makes it really difficult um, to land on a lineup where you're like, okay, I like every piece of that. And those are the nights that scare me the most. I hate when there's a piece of my lineup that I don't like. I feel so much more comfortable when it all, come on, when it all just smoothly fits together. And you're like, oh, I didn't even have to do much work. So let's see what we get here. 
I assume it's going to be a ton of Monroe. I am wrong. Embiid, Gasol, and Towns. One lineup out of 50 with Monroe. I get it. So in that case, I would probably be focusing on Marc Gasol. Um, TJ Warren pops in 50, so I would pick that straight out of the gate. When I do that, it filters to 27 lineups. A lot of Embiid and a chunk of Gasol. So what is next? I liked Butler and Warren at small forward as twos, Gasol and Monroe. So I already have Butler, or I already have Warren. If I take Butler, it makes it pretty easy to go to Gasol. And then that leaves me two lineups. Um, I'd be nervous about the first one, obviously, with Evans and Brogdon. So I would probably rejigger that. Uh, Kyrie, TJ McConnell, Middleton, Ellington, Butler, Warren, Henson, Collins, Gasol. It would take some massaging there. Um, but I think having a base of Butler, Warren, Gasol would probably be my starting point. For now. It all changes. So let's look at DK. Oh. <sighs> Boop, boop, ba -doop, ba -doop, ba -doop. All right, we'll bump that up. Let's see what we get. It's always just so different. So much John Collins. So much Jarrell Martin. Okay. So Marcus All and TJ Warren were my two biggies on DK. Warren is in 34% of lineups. Gasol in fucking zero. How much worse was this price? 8,500, that'll do it. Okay, so let's start with TJ Warren. So many threes. It's just it all blends together. It's there's there's very little differentiation tonight. It's so oh I don't like it. There's no sign of Butler anywhere on DK, which is crazy. It's Towns, one lineup with Towns. So we're looking at Collins, Martin, Jokic, Bledsoe, Barton. Alright, so I guess it would be Jokic and then Bledsoe? Where do I end up from there? Are they in order? No. Smith, Jr., Wiggins, Bledsoe, Martin. I don't know why I read them in opposite orders. Jokic, Brogdon, Warren, Barton, no. Kemba, no. So much bucks, which is... I don't like that. Should I like it? Was it was it something I missed? They were all just middling. Bledsoe, Brogdon, Henson. I mean, I can't. If I was going to do it, I would probably just take Giannis. Yeah, I don't know. I think we need one piece of news that opens up like a $4,000 guy. And it'll really make things shift around. All right. So that's it. Um, I will be live before lock tonight at 6. So it'll be nice to get back to that. Um, otherwise, you guys know the drill. Uh, projections are at my website. Um, like and subscribe to the video uh, if you enjoyed this. Um, check me out on Twitter or on Reddit. I'm trying to be as... I'm trying to be everywhere. Check out Patreon if you've been uh, following along and want to help me out on a month-to-month -month basis. But otherwise, um, that's all I've got, and I will be with you guys again tonight. So have a good day.